G'day people, I'm Sharon, welcome to my channel. Today I'm sewing on buttons with my sewing machine. What's my secret? This. The first thing we need to do if we're going to sew on a button with a sewing machine is drop the feed dogs. Now, the feed dogs are a bit under here. I'm going to be taking this foot off. I pull the little button at the back towards me. And there you can see the feed dogs. On this machine and a lot of the Janome machines, when I pull off the free arm, the switch is just behind here. I'm pulling that over to the right. And if you'll notice, when I did that, these went down. They will not come up when I push it back over to the left until I have done one stitch. So if I do a needle down, needle up, now they're up again. So you can see they go down immediately, but they do not come up until I have pushed it back over to the left and then done one stitch. That particular switch on some of the machines is at the front. Um, a number of the machines have it on the right hand side of the machine towards the bottom um, and it shows a wiggly line with a line underneath it or a wiggly line with the line over the top and what that's indicating is that the feed dogs are either above this plate or below this plate. I'm going to put on the T foot and the T foot in Janome is the one for showing sewing buttons on. It's one of the ones with two bars, so it goes over the hook at the back of the ankle first, and then I drop the ankle onto it. I next need to choose a zigzag stitch. And it's just a regular zigzag, that's all we're choosing, but we are going to alter the width of the zigzag. Currently on this machine set to five mils wide, I'm going to take it down to four mils wide. And the reason I've taken that down to four is that I am aware that on most buttons, the distance between the holes, left to right, is somewhere between three and a half and four mils that I can get the needle to go down in there. The most important hint that I can give you about sewing buttons on is this. Use some sticky tape. This is scotch tape. Comes off quite easily but it holds the button where you want it to be. If you can't see the holes, use something to push through there so that you can see where the holes are. Line it under the foot and put the needle down but hand wind it down do not use the needle up down button hand wind it down now if you've got a machine like this one that's going to do a lock stitch when you start doing a zigzag you need to let it hand wind as many stitches as it's going to do in its lock stitch and you can see it's just about to start doing zigzag and now I need to adjust my stitch width to make sure I'm coming down in that hole, which I am. So four millimeters, or having my machine set to 4.0, works fine. So now I'm going to stitch it. Is one stitch done? And I'm going to do a lock stitch. And it's done. If you really want to make sure that this is not come off, going to come off at all, without moving it, do the same thing again. But I can do it with my foot control now because I already know that it's set to the right places. So I can do the lock stitch. Stitch it on. When I'm happy it's done enough, I'll push the button again on the left when it's going down onto the left. 
and it's done. And that has been sewn on twice and in each case there was a lock stitch at the end of it. I'll just cut that off and I can pull the sticky tape off very easily and that's how quickly I can do sewing a button on and those threads because they were lock stitches I can just trim them off they're not going to come undone especially not if I trim them off on top this button has got four holes in it but I'm pretty sure they're spaced out about the same as the previous one get that stuck down wherever it is that you want it put the foot on top now you do need to try and make sure that it's those holes are straight across now if I go down there I'm right at the left hand side these ones might be very slightly closer so I'm okay there I'm going to hand wind it to sorry. it's going up now this one that's no good it's too close to the edge I'm going to adjust this a bit but I need to make sure I haven't adjusted the, the left one out of position. There we go. We're fine. So four millimeters has worked on this one again. Lock stitch. Oops. Now I know that the holes that distance apart is fine but I really need to move this now down to get the other two holes so that I'm going to hand wind again is it okay it's a little bit too far to the right I think so I'm just going to move it very slightly over lock stitch and there's the next one done and they really are that easy it takes me less time to put the button foot on my machine than it would take me to find all the other bits and pieces I would need to do and to thread a needle to hand stitch it on. With this one I'm pretty sure that those holes are actually closer together this particular machine doesn't have a stitch that's intentional for the button sewing on The ones that do will have you put the left hand but the hole right in the corner on the left hand side. Make sure you've got the foot down so we've got 10 on the thread. We've gone up. Now that one has actually it's going to hit the button. So the needle is going to go into the button there. That's no good. I need to lift the foot up and I'm going to make the size of the zigzag smaller. And once I'm happy, I can start sewing. the lock stitch and then move it and this is an unusually narrow or small size in the holes but I hand wind these until I'm sure I've got it right 
and once I'm sure then I can go with the foot control and we're done. If you want to sew a button on a jacket and the jacket has a lot of um, thickness to the fabric you might want to use one of these pieces in order to create a shank and what will happen this goes under here and the button as it's sewn on the button still has to be in there um, will be a distance away from the fabric which means that as the stitches are sewn there will be extra thread in there for that shank so I still need to work out where it's going to go the idea is probably here so I need to work out where my button is going to go and essentially I'm sticking down the button onto this piece and I'm probably going to have to go back to the four millimeters width I'll just get that piece of thread out of the way but once again it's hand stitching the lock stitch at the beginning and that one pretty good Cut it off from the threads at the moment but I haven't moved anything else I'm not sure if you can actually see through there the stitching and there is a gap between the button and the fabric so now when I take this off there's a gap underneath so that will help it when it's trying to go and hold a jacket together that has got thicker fabric where this one is quite tight quite a bit of difference those are the buttons I've just sewn on with the sewing machine this one here you can see is quite loose and that's the one that I had done the stuff for giving it a bit more room you might want to wind some thread around there to hold it more firmly in but that's fairly standard buttons which ones can't I do with my sewing machine I'm not going to manage to do something like that it's only got one hole in it I'd have to be going into it and out of it and it's quite thick so I'm probably not going to even attempt that little ones yep fine this one's got a shank that way on it I don't know of any way to use the sewing machine to make that happen so I can't do those ones same with this one and this one the holes are just way too far apart for that one to work but most standard buttons I can sew on very easily I rarely ever sew any buttons on by hand now it's usually easier to thread my sewing machine with the needle threader than to try and thread a hand sewing needle. See you next time.